I want to start today with the five things that you missed overnight. Let's start with the first one, which is these PPP loan programs. And you know, this was supposed to help small businesses, but we're getting some reporting this morning that guess what? There are lots of businesses that were created that are totally fake that received millions of dollars in PPP loans. Yes. In fact, so much so that some businesses were created out of thin air, copied other businesses, created fake websites in order to scam the federal government out of all of this PPP money. Over 75 companies that receive money from the Paycheck Protection Program seem to have not existed at all before COVID. They just came out of nowhere and suddenly they need assistance. This money was meant for struggling businesses, of course, and it was meant to keep the lights on to be able to pay employees, pay some expenses. But there are bound to be some bad apples in all of this, of course. There's always going to be. And this was meant to be a sledgehammer. It was not meant to be like a sniper attack. It was meant to be just like, all right, we're just going to get this money out there. We're not going to have great auditing in place. We just need to get this out there. Get it out to the American people. And we'll worry about the auditing later, which is now what they're doing. And now they're discovering all of these fraudulent companies. For example, a man in Texas is linked to five suspicious companies that received $3.6 million in PPP money. He applied on behalf of a school with a cut and pasted curriculum from a European school. So he went on a European website, cut and pasted a curriculum, created a fake website and got PPP money. Two companies with the same website and two companies with no web processes whatsoever. <laughs> Genius. Genius. And a lot of this is happening in Florida. So there's a lot of Florida fraud. What's going on down there in Florida, guys? I know Florida is always, a, you know, the joke because it's always the state that has the funkiest, weirdest news stories. And we used to joke about that on the news and I, because it would be like, oh, once again, Florida, there's a there's a naked man with an alligator and a, and a python robbing a bank. You know, you never know what kind of stories you're going to get out of Florida. Anyway, over 20 businesses there have been charged with fraudulent use of the PPP program. One out of four of them is from Florida. Uh, PPP was relatively easy to gain because it was really based on self-reported data. So it was kind of like the, um, the honor policy or the, uh, you know, just saying, hey, you know, we're going to take your word for it until then the government decides to start looking into it and actually finds that there's a lot of fraud going on. But you also know that the government has been incredibly lazy about this and they have not put in an oversight committee to actually look into this. So still, right, we don't even have proper oversight on any of this spending. So how many people, we're gonna find out later, sadly, that millions of dollars just lost, billions went to crony capitalism. There's gonna be all sorts of crony money that you're gonna find that this, you know, Trump casino or this Pelosi this over here, I mean, it's all gonna come out eventually and it's gonna be disgusting when it does, we'll see. Speaking of Florida, here's the second thing you need to know this morning that you might've missed. Florida has been hiding data about coronavirus cases in kids. That's right. This is not good news, um, but not surprising. The virus cases are rising among school-aged children in Florida, and the state has been hiding some of this data, according to the Miami Herald. Uh, excuse me, according to the Seattle Times. Volunteers across Florida have set up their own school-related coronavirus dashboards to try to keep track of this. Right now, infections among school-aged children there have jumped 34%. But many parents in parts of the state don't know if the outbreaks are virus related to their own schools because the state ordered some counties to keep their health data secret. Governor Ron DeSantis, Republican, has pushed aggressively, of course, for these schools to offer in-person classes, as the Seattle Times says, even when Florida was the hot spot of the nation and in threatening to withhold funding um, if to districts if they didn't allow the students to get back into the classrooms. So right now, this is what Florida is saying. Florida Department of Health reported that 10,513 children under the age of 18 have tested positive since schools started reopening for in-person learning. That's an increase of 34%. The state is not saying how many of those children were in school or doing remote learning. So again, Come on, transparency. Can we see some of this data? The third thing you might have missed overnight, more than 50% of families, according to this new research, that live in big cities are struggling, and they're struggling mightily. Uh, this reporting comes to us from the week, at least half of all households in those cities, 53% in New York City, 56% in Los Angeles, 50% in Chicago, 63% in Houston, 
they have serious financial problems, including they, they don't have any savings anymore. They can't pay their credit card bills. Um, they can't afford to pay their medical bills. Uh, and many of them are being forced to, to, to file for bankruptcy because they can't, they can't afford it. And we have no further stimulus. And once again, black and Latino households are in all four of these cities were the most vulnerable. Shocking, I know. It's like a broken record on this show. In New York, 62% of black households and 73% of Latino households reported struggles. The same as basically the case in Los Angeles and Houston and all across the country in these big cities. Let me know in the chat below if this sounds like your family or you know a family that's struggling in this way that lives in one of these larger metro areas that's unable to pay their bills, can't pay their credit card bills, depleted savings, and is worried, frankly, about being evicted as well because they can't pay their rent. The fourth story that you might have missed overnight, and I think is a really important story and kind of shocking and surprising, is that BP, yes, British Petroleum Company, is now getting into wind power. Never thought I'd see this day, but BP, I guess, maybe trying to win back the... <laughs> Win back the, uh, you know, the, we're, we're trying to win the PR battle once again after they, uh, of course, we, we know what all happened before with BP and, uh, you know, leaking oil everywhere. Um, they have entered the offshore wind market with a $1.1 billion deal to buy 50% stake in two different U.S. developments from Norway in Norway. And what's going to do is it's going to power 2 million American homes. So this wind power that they're setting up will power 2 million American homes. It's a big deal. And uh, the chief executive uh, of BP said, this is an important early step in the delivery of our new strategy and our pivot to truly become an integrated energy company. And their goal is to basically reduce and slash carbon emissions. Um, that's been their goal. And that's been, they, they've said it, they publicly put it out there not too long ago, and now they're living up to it with wind power good for them it's renewable um and uh and it's far it's far it's far better on the environment that's for darn sure the fifth thing that you might have missed overnight guess what halloween is canceled i know i didn't want to break this to you but yes sure enough halloween in certain parts of the country being you know not going to happen los angeles county right now they're backtracking on their uh coronavirus trick-or-treat ban um, they're saying, you know, we've seen pretty severe waves and we are really worried about it. And so they're saying, we do not want you to go out and trigger treat. And other cities are also stepping up to do this as well. Detroit is uh, looking at this. Um, but this is reminiscent of the 1918 flu. They caused all sorts of Halloween cancellations across the United States. It's really repeating itself. And they said Halloween parties in general, as well as other social functions, attract large numbers of people. It was discouraged then back in 1918 in the Los Angeles Times. They didn't want people getting together back then. And uh, they said the highest death rates occurred between October and December in 1918. Remember, 50 million people in America, between 50 and 100 million people worldwide. Um, pretty substantial death count because of the Spanish flu in 1918. So Halloween looks like it's going to be canceled for most of you. Do you guys have plans? Do you guys have plans to take your kids trick or treating? Let me know in the comments below. If you, I mean, I don't know who's going to go out and get go door to door, have someone hand you candy, I, and then go to the next house. It's like, here, can I just hand out some coronavirus to everyone in the neighborhood? I mean, it, all it takes is that one person passing it to one kid and that kid takes it to the next house. It's like, it's like whisper down the lane. It's like coronavirus down the lane. I think you'd be crazy. I mean, that's my opinion. I think right now, I mean, it's, it's crazy, especially when flu season is going to start up and everything else. My gosh, let me know in the chat below if you plan on doing that. Uh, or will Halloween be canceled in your neck of the woods? Um, and go ahead and smash that like button. Please also don't forget to subscribe to our daily morning newsletter. You can download it for free just by going to morninginvest.com. It'll be delivered to your inbox first thing in the morning.